Welcome back. Oh man. no, the Great Divide. Fuck that episode. <laughs> <laughs> the what? Beyond the Great Divide. That was, it was yeah. Oh, that. Episode. Don't don't worry, Dwebs. Not that Great Divide. It, this is a different <sighs> Great Divide. Don't worry. <sighs> anyway, we've I learned. Know. Anyway, we've learned. We've learned another specific outside of battle spell, Rejuvenate, which you may remember from the first game, right, Teo? Yeah. <sighs> yes. I don't know why, guys, but I feel I like mean... I'm a month older all of a sudden. Our, our recent party member, uh, Leander, told us that uh, it has been passed on through generations, so in during, thanks to this it has been improved. Yeah, tireless efforts brought you coin, get money. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we've no already read. We, 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 no we, bling, 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 yeah. blah, 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 blah. Fuck, fuck off, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so basically we're still taking care of a bit of our kingdom. Let's check some stuff. Let's see. Um, first let's check our party. Greetings, citizens. Please donate to our coffers. They're running dangerously, though. We can barely afford the water bills. Well, t well, <laughs> Dwebs, that's kind of what taxes are for. So, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, Evan's such a rookie at being a king that you'll probably jack up the price. <laughs> well, hey, well you that's Dwebs, Dwebs. It out of us. Well, remember, Dwebs, that's the primary reason why um, Evan... Um, allows needs uh, the, uh, the people, uh, needs the people around him. He himself acknowledges that he's no politician or anything like that, the sort, so he needs his friends to help him. But anyway, he has been tasked with this responsibility from while being extremely young, so which is which, oh which was uh, which has hap happened a lot more in real life than you may think, actually. Yes, again, like I mentioned, also Henry the Sixth, I think that level five uh, referenced, uh, well, te technically wow. used for Jean d'Arc. Wait, wow, Triton, wow, Luke, uh, Luke had a great makeover. Yes. Not anyway, yeah, Triton, the task ma so, yeah, yeah, the taskmaster. Like Triton that's water based. So yeah, the Swift, the, the taskmaster at Swift Solutions has some new citizens that are interested in joining our kingdom. Oh, yes, yes, the more influence grows, the greater our power output will be. That actually is uh, the story explanation, yes, very good, Jova. Um, well, not, not just, it's not even just that, remember, as we've seen in previous parts, they actually have personal reasons outside of the influence, even. So sometimes they, they, like, remember, Lily was genuinely, you know, gro she didn't like, she was so disappointed in uh, Master Pugnacious' rule that she really wanted to leave in general. So basically, it, there's, also, there's always a personal reason why they want to move to change. Basi basically, I for one welcome our new Revenant Kingdom overlords. Yes. <laughs> Well, it's, it also has to do with the fact that um, Evermore stands for stands for um, peace and equality and overall just positive stuff in general. So obviously, and it's going to be in a, a, in a turbulent climate like the one. The this world is, seems to be a good offer to take. And now I'll never know her feelings. <laughs> Look at Evermore, all those quests. Indeed. Actually, take your pick, Tio. Evermore from Beauty and the Beast or Evermore from Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven? Mm. I actually I prefer, when it comes to Evermore, I actually prefer the Josh Groban vo version. Uh, right, the credits version. Uh, yes. Um, uh, I, I, it's just because I'm a big fan of Josh Groban, so... <laughs> I gotta say, Disney have been on the roll with a lot of their Disney live-action remakes, and I'll admit, I'm actually kind of hyped seeing that little tease we saw from their live-action well, Aladdin. Aladdin thing. Yeah. Like, Iago actually looks pretty good. Aladdin, while he looks quite different in costume, looks oh. pretty bad. And the throwback to the tiger so head this is Philippe. pretty awesome. All right, so, we're gonna, so our first uh, candidate is Filippos, which will be voiced by the Dwebs. Dwebs, um, you see... He's verb. Oh, he's verb. Okay. I'll oh, I know you. A taskmaster at Swift Solutions Actually, told yeah, me that, that you perfectly. are the hero who saved Hydropolis. Never mind. I'll take Dwebs' role and give it to Jova. I you need you to lose with me to come to your kingdom and help you, and clearly you have a great eye for talent. This design is familiar, but it can catch. Yes, yeah, exactly it's it's a, it's a throwback to um, an old series that Miyazaki oh. worked on too. Yeah, yeah, the, the the boy from the future. I forgot what he's called. Uh, yes. Yeah. From uh, Lost Future. No, no, no. That, that's because Teo Yoshio Kimamose worked on that as well, so as you can probably tell this is. A little Easter egg kind, inserted. Yeah, this is the kind of design that young male kids uh, had uh, in animes like in the 70s, 80s. Anyway, I like how that his... little bit in the melody there sounds like the good, the bad, and the ugly. 
Anyway, the thing about yeah. Philippus is that he's a novice hunter and he wants to become a proper hunter. However, as you can probably guess, in this particular kingdom, there's not really that much chance to actually hunt because, well, oh, we're surrounded okay. by what water. Are you talking about? There's Why nothing not here, also. What? I'm sure there are plenty of sharks that would put up a good fight. Well, but he's not a fisherman, though. Yeah. Um, oh, so how the heck do you get expirations of getting to be a hunter in a place well, like this? Well, that's exactly the it's, thing, Jova. He wants to become one, but uh, he has oh, never gotten the chance. Did so. he just practice on some some... random birds or something? Jova, it's the Disney princess conundrum. He I want to... something more! Yeah, so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, oh, he will, so yeah, obviously he will be joining our hunt, our stuff like the hunting lodge and mining camps, all you that know, stuff. It is kind of a shame that some of these people we can't pick as party members to take with us occasionally because there's a lot of interesting character designs. And it's kind of a shame that they don't, you know, upgrade the looks as they upgrade the levels. I Granted, okay it's not this, a deal sorry. breaker. It's just something that I would have liked to have seen. But I don't need to deal with breaker, this though. Java because otherwise you will have a situation kind of like Chrono Cross. Uh, where yeah, the Chrono Cross does exactly yeah. what you said, Jova, but as a result, he becomes way too dispersive. Characters barely have any personality at all, and the story becomes a mess. That yeah. is sadly a thing with Chrono Cross. Uh, it's like, Jova. oh, oh, oh you hello. must be the helpful hello. young man about whom everyone has been talking. Yes, it stands to reason. You have a kind face. <laughs> you do? Well, remember, Teo, he's a kid designed a by cat. Yoshiki Momose. That too, yeah. <laughs> A similar countenance to mine in my younger years. Ha <laughs> ha Ah, there's the reason. He reminds him of himself as a kid. Oh. Now, I wonder, why have you come to talk to me? Oh, wait, I will guess. It is because you wish me to join in your kingdom, am I correct? Um, um, no, I didn't actually say anything. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am? I am inviting you myself. For me to join you? Surely not. Uh... To quote Ted, you got a lot of problems, don't you, dude? Like, uh, <laughs> then it is not only your face that is kind, you also possess a warm heart, young man. There are far more talented men than I in the kingdom of Hydropolis. You yes, sure? <laughs> so basically, you want to join my kingdom so you can massage your own ego. That's my diagnosis so far. <laughs> eh, I'm just gonna go in that. We're the first people who have truly believed in him. Hmm. Considering how Hydropolis tends to well, act. Well, to be fair, he is a good um, he is a good armorer, so we can always use uh, more armors. So yeah, sure. Yeah. To be fair, I think it's probably best to move out of Hydropolis, considering how things are kind of going to go to crap here in a few years, seeing as how the cycle's finally broken. There's that yeah, too. Yeah. The volcano thing. Yeah, you should probably move far. Everyone away. should probably move. Don't worry, Shiroi. Um, Everyone will be evacuated in time. No, don't you see, Shiroi? The gems are working on that gem drill. And not just can someone th please do something about that creepy not, eye? Not, not, not just that, Shiroi, but remember, now that um, Adropolis and Evermore are allies, obviously Evermore is going to try to help out as much as possible. So, yeah. It, it, With it, eventual it, refugees in case of emergencies, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, Jove. I know you have going to a lot, but could no, you please? No, no, it's okay. Go Helena. on. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, you want me to voice her? Yeah. Oh, okay. Are you sure? After all, you have been running all around the world helping people. This is great practice for my voice acting gig. Everyone requires a break and a good meal from time to time. Mm-hmm. I appreciate the practice. Which is not to say that I do not understand your desires to do right by others. I am oh, similarly inclined. I even go hunting in order to... How do you? Okay, maybe they just go hunting after. Maybe it's like... she leaves the kingdom, basically. Yeah. Okay. I forgot. Really? Um, I, I forgot. I muted. Um, have I missed anything? Uh, not much. Not much. You're an admiral, young man. It would be my pleasure to become your subject. The basic gist of it um, is that once ever she needs to get in. Give me a bow, and I will prove my worth. Yeah. Both on the hunting ground and in battle. So yeah, kind of similar to Filippos, uh, in order to get the ingredients she uses on her cooking, she needs to go hunt with her bow. However, if she moves to Evermore, obviously it would be a lot easier to do her craft. So. Ah, so she's both a cook and a huntress. Also, she's kind of, I don't know if it's a perspective, but she's kind of short. Mm -hmm. I mean, Emma kind of stands her. Uh, Either yeah. that or we're standing a bit far from her, but yeah, she does look a bit weird next to Evan. Like well, that. I'm guessing it 
kind of fits uh, again, with, the, sh- with the Greek uh, architecture and culture we're going for. Well, it is true. Uh, that's one thing I also say too. Like, uh, while Akira Toriyama will always be my favorite JRPG character designer, because I mean, he's Akira Toriyama for crying out loud. Um, <laughs> Uh, I one thing that Mamorze definitely has over him is uh, he's much he's much he has much more variety in his designs. Yeah, I can see that. Whereas with Toriyama, don't get me wrong. Obviously, the guy has been designing characters for what almost forty years now. So no, Toriyama has only 30. like a range of two, three faces, uh, yeah. face types. So. Uh, don't, and don't Sorry. get me wrong, being a Dreamcast fan, obviously I adore uh, Toriyama's style. It's just that obviously. Um, Mamoze, on the other hand, he's an absolute master, obviously. I mean, you know, to a character I'm as credit, that's, that's you got too. a Go style ahead. that I, is I, iconic I, to I, you. I should tell you like this guy. Right. Hydropolis, foremost magical scholar. I come from a long line of seekers <laughs> into the secrets of sorcery. But I have other interest, of course. I write epic poems and can often be found on the beach searching for exotic <laughs> really? seizures. I was about to say, he, and I also like long lots on the beach. <laughs> At the moment, however, it is the search for a life partner that is consuming the bulk of my <laughs> energy. Well, now that that stuff is finally allowed... After all, now that the edict forbidding love has been lifted, I will be a fool to not seek out a fabulous romance. <laughs> and I believe the woman of my dreams may well be about to appear. Good well, on, 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 listen here. Go ahead. I am waiting for it as we speak, and as such, I must ask you, that you do not take up too much of my time. If there is something that you wish to ask, please ask it quickly. Hmm? The old man and taskmaster sent you here to request that I become a citizen of your kingdom? Are you certain? Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I know the payoff of this. Listen to the payoff. I ask a person who was designed to spend the rest of Oh. <laughs> I'm not qualified for this. Um. I am not qualified for this at all. Uh, oh God! The, so the taskmaster task is a new sense of humor. I'm so I'm so no no no. It's the thing too. Wait, Triton like should have been more specific. Is, Remember, he's been Triton. looking for my ideal employer instead. There you go. Aww. See, he should have been more specific. <laughs> um, I gotta wonder how awkward here. this my is for Evan. For a lot of people, oh, embarrassing. <laughs> Imagine for you, how do you think I feel in all this? Again, it, it really, again, it's... It would, of course, be a great honor to join <laughs> your crown, King Evan. Might as well at this point. This again, and you're welcome I in. want to do all the kind of service of your great nation. Yeah, this is another example of why I love Hino's character writing. He knows how to how to immediately uh, make uh, like a character memorable just purely through just a couple lines, like this. Shall make my way very immediately, Habush. All right, so yeah, uh, it was a misunderstanding. Obviously, Triton should have been more specific when talking to the Taskmaster, but hey, we got a new citizen yeah. out of the whole It's deal. a misunderstanding that didn't see us seeing... And hey, look, at, look at the bright side. You may have found, actually, your love, your lo- the love of your life there. Who knows? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Cat people... Well, I, tell you, well, tell, people. well tell, I can tell you that uh, he's not done in this game so far. Yay. Oh, my God. Fish people meeting with cat people. Catfish. 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 <laughs> well, 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 that makes sense, Jova. Remember, um, Evermore is all about uh, tolerance and equality and all that good stuff. So obviously, and hey, cats do love themselves some fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so yeah, let's so who's t- next? Proteus, the oh, Proteus, Proteus, the gloomy jeweler. You. Remember, okay, for those who don't remember, um, one of the people we did talk to when we were investigating in Adropolis was a jeweler who was feeling very down in the dumps. Yeah. So, well, if he's down in the dumps, maybe a change of scenery will make him feel better? Hmm? Yeah. Maybe we should have Mario sit on a bench next to him and comfort him. Let's see. Aww. And then he'll give up his power moon for that. Again, one of the big reasons why I absolutely really like the entire thing about kingdom building and getting citizens, it, this is not just... In, again, it's such a great tool to use to just get the player familiarized with the world and its citizens. Like, and as and a result... actually care uh-huh. about the NPCs. Yeah. Hello. My word, how exceptionally beautiful. The glint in your uh-huh. eyes. It is akin to the most precious of jewels. Remember, uh, he has oh a twinkle no, in his I eye. I don't know how I feel Some about this. Don't, I don't mean it like that. It tells me that you live a happy, fulfilling life, surrounded by dear friends and close allies. I must confess to feeling rather envious. So there you go, he has no friends. 
Aww. Aww. You lonely. gave such a wonderful opening there, too. I'm touched. You think and you're staring lonely? staring solemnly at the ocean. You think you're lonely? How do you think I feel? I, on the other hand, have no one. I was, oh, oh, the, the, I was once in love, indeed. I once gave a ring to my beloved. Alas, she did not treasure it. No, she... She sold it. Oh, oh that's... How? Blow, blow. Since then, I have focused only on my work, concentrating upon every minute detail of the stones helps to prevent the pain of my broken heart from becoming unbearable. So there we go, he became a jeweler to distract himself from, her, from his heartbreak. Jesus. And then, and then, and then, and then every time... A, a guy who sells rings goes past. He starts crying. Like I can imagine it going yeah, like this: say, rings this for sale, good. rings for sale. Oh, <laughs> this guy would have. <laughs> I cannot. Okay, okay. So this is the guy who created Sonic One Omo Chow Edition. He can't stand the rings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So the world must suffer for. So him. yeah, well, hopefully Proteus will find happiness in the new kingdom. You'd be surprised, George. Jaded people can be some forgot, of the most biggest uh, detriments ever. Forgot if I mentioned already for random trivia, Proteus is the name given to the from the Greeks to a demigod who had the ability to shape shift into anything he wanted. From that name, it was given to a creature that looks similar to but, no, the cave salamander, the one we see in Foreigner for Gym 2. Uh, blind cave blind, salamander. But, yeah, blind and he has the ability to change colors in some cases. Also, oh, is that to the next part. Of... To the next part when Evans now is suddenly a blind cave salamander. Oh, all right, all right. Hey, hey Evan. Sorry, no, no. Is it is it is it Evan? Uh, yes, yes Evan. Evan. Um, well, hold, hold on. on. That's hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah. sure. That's you. If I remember correctly, go ahead. Oh, I am the only woman worthy of Thomas. Is that Thomas. Th Tom. Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. Affection. That's clear for all to see, is it not? So yeah, this guy called Ooh. Thomas, he has a lot of female admirers, as you can see. Uh, I guess. Alright, all right. All right, Evan, let's give him a ring. I, Thomas, I gotta you wonder. Me. I can hardly bear to gaze upon your tasseling beauty. I gotta wonder, what decides whether or not you <laughs> have blue skin girls. and gills or just dark skin in this area? Look at even this old lady. Do not abstract me, young oh, man. No. Uh, excuse me. I, I have come to gaze upon the beauty of Thomas, and I do not intend to allow anyone to get in my way. This guy is going places. <laughs> Got the love of everybody. What about this chick? Go ahead, Trevor. Um, Thomas, do you not remember? You promised to take me to the Tabana. Hmm? Oh. Uh, you say you made no such promise? Oh, oh. <laughs> Let's <laughs> Alright, Joe, but well, you're Thomas, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh it, it is you. Yes, it is me. You stuck these fag girls on me. Please, I must converse with you in private. Uh, follow me, I beg of you. <laughs> Let's get away from my fangirls. You seem Let's... to you seem to be enjoying the attention. Actually, yeah, actually, she he speak isn't. In peace. There you go. I have heard the rumors concerning you. You see, I've been hoping to meet with you for a while. Get me off this island, away from these crazy women. Actually, Shiroi, that's exactly it. The Hydropolis are singing your <laughs> praises for all that you have done for them. And for my part, it is a relief to see so many smiling faces. Uh, but I have neglected to introduce myself. I am Thomas, and I will. I suppose you could say that I am a sorcerer. Oh. Indeed, it is a subject relating to my profession that I wish to speak with you about. I have a request to make, and you are the only one who can grant it. All right. Shoot. I wish to flee Hydropolis and seek sanctuary in your kingdom. There you go, she right. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized. I'm so like tired of fangirls all over me. There Ever since the edict forbidding romance was lifted, I have been surrounded by love-struck <laughs> women. <laughs> having a terrible effect Bearer on the world. Bearer of the curse. Uh, <laughs> so, so there you go. The guy cannot focus on his work because the fucking fangirls. <laughs> All I ask is to be able to perform my sorcery in peace. Please uh, allow me to, to join you in your kingdom. I am sure you will be able to find a use for my magical skills. Well, yeah, of course. I am a, a sorcerer for the Hobblebury mm. and, um, and the sorcerer works. Come to think of it, if I allow him to join my kingdom, that'll attract a lot more of the female populace over more the kingdom mites. You do not know how much this means to me, your majesty. I cannot thank you enough. Well... We've saved the men from rabbit fangirls. Now I, bet Evan is, <laughs> now I bet Evan is wondering, should I advertise this to attract more people to my kingdom? 
<laughs> or should I just leave him be? <laughs> the I needs mean, of the many do outweigh the needs of the few. I, I mean, Evan, you kind of need um, like a, a birth rate booster, so you know. Yeah, why not? <laughs> so just okay, showcase your... all the pretty boys so all the fangirls uh, <laughs> but anyway a thing that uh, well, i forgot if i told that i've noticed this before but a thing that i'm uh surprisingly okay for for this game is uh, the fact that so many people have similar jobs to each other i know it sounds like an obvious thing but in a lot of jrpgs you get to have uh, like so few hunters or so few magician here they seem more like uh, a common a common job it makes the world more organic and believable to me as a result i can do it mm -hmm. it also works from a gameplay standpoint because it makes sense that in order to ha in order to do magical research obviously you need multiple sorcerers so it makes exactly. sense exactly so Obviously, just having one person for for each thing, know, it's it, not exactly it's, it's productive. A it's a thing that, it's a thing that uh, I don't oh, see actually, that me, much oh, sorry. Anyway, Proteus, a melancholy master jeweler who channels all his sadness and regret into his creations. The more elaborate the piece he, he makes, the more one should worry about his emotional well-being. That's sad. <laughs> like... Crawling in my skin, these jewels will not heal. Triton, a scholar with profound knowledge of the ancient source of Adropolis. He believes in order and discipline, so was always more happy to follow Queen Neria's many rules. He loves poetry and tries to woo girls with flowery quotes from obscure works. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Hopefully Triton will find love somewhere in Evermore. Amen Philippus, a young hunter who is much loved in Adropolis for his unfailing ability to fell the gulls that pastor the fishing fleet. He may look rough and ready, but he's very responsible for his age. Although he does enjoy yeah, playing the odd practicing on birds. Although yeah, he does it... enjoy playing the oh, odd practical joke. That? As for Peleos, he's a slightly unpredictable character, but his talent for making weapons is undeniable. He can also craft high-quality fishing gear, which is much valued in Adropolis. His roving eye and inability to refrain from flirting often earns him Leander's ire. <laughs> hmm. huh. So basically there's a lot of so basically he's the opposite of farmers, basically. As for, he as keeps for, his work and uh, personal life separate. As for Elena, a chef who likes to hunt and gather her own ingredients. Yeah, like I said, she's well liked, she's known for never backing down from an argument. She even once tried to settle a disagreement with her bow, which didn't go down well with the powers <laughs> that be at all. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> Alright, that's about it for the citizens we we gathered. Alright. Speaking of citizens, since we have some <laughs> new citizens, let's assign them to new facilities then. Attention citizens, I'm about to conduct another job shift. You were oh saying... god, everyone hide. <laughs> you were saying that, sorry. I was just gonna say, uh, tune in next tune in next week where we conduct where we conduct another poll of citizens kit that I mean drafted. I mean uh, <laughs> uh Well Deb, Well Dwebs uh, as you as we've just been saying so far, they've all came out of their own free will and desire, so or have even no, requested, no, no, I, no, so. I got it, I got it. The leadership of Ding Dong Dell will try and spin it into thinking he kidnapped them. Propaganda! Well, it makes that sense, consider, well, it makes sense considering uh, Mausinger uh, hates um, Grimalkin. But we'll get, we'll get back to that stop, plot line in Chapter 8. For yeah, now, it's clear that the game is very anticipating one. without showing you what's uh, going on in Ding Dong Dell. It makes you quite Don't worry, Teo. When we get back to Ding Dong Dell, yeah, let's just say, Teo, when we get back to Ding Dong Dell, it will be, how, how shall I put it, unrecognizable. Especially you, if you have already had the expectations from playing the first game. Mm. I will say this, though, from the trailer that was shown, I'd have thought Mazinger would be one of the first bosses to go to. I mean, that's how the trailer portrayed him as, to say. Like a more of a starting villain. Yeah. And he kind of uh, still does have that guise to me, because it, it's so obvious he's being played by the true bad guy. Well, the, the structure of the game is more episodic in that kind of way, so at the end of the day, the real goal obviously is going to be uh, the mastermind. Yeah, the Lord, not uh, necessarily just uh, his pawns. Yeah. It's a typical JRPG trope where uh, there's like a big bad guy behind the smaller bad guys. This has been a thing since Sakaguchi started making JRPGs. 
Like, you know what? I'll give Nino Kuni 2 credit. At least they're pretty much, you know, they're kind of already building up a true bad guy DeLorean. So of, oops, I'm out of nowhere. It's like, for, ex it's like for example, yeah. my person... I'll, like, take, I'll take a plot that actually does properly foreshadow and build up to it, like, say, Final Fantasy IX. And when I'm talking about Final Fantasy IX, I'm talking about Kuja, not... Necron. Necron. <laughs> Fun fact, I mean, Jovi, in the Italian version, that boss is called Trivia. I don't know it's not even why. A matter of, it's not even a matter of him just being foreshadowed or not. Like, Necron in general is just a fucking useless character in general. Like, I, I think the thing with Final it's, Fantasy it's, it's Nine, just it literally the final turned, boss because we needed a final boss. So. Yeah. He has to be in Final Fantasy IX. At the end, it literally turns into villain usurpception. Because mm -hmm. Kuja was originally and, the bad and guy Yoda behind. For no reason. I mean, Kuja is already the bad guy who's behind the evil queen, who turns out to later regret her evil as she dies. But you can I argue. Sorry, you can argue that it was supposed to be a throwback to something like Final Fantasy III, where the Cloud of Darkness pretty much came the fuck out of nowhere in that and game as well. I, and I will and I will say that it's just as bad, kinda, in that game. Yeah, it is. Free, but here's the thing, though. Plots in the entire franchise. But, it, but, but here's the thing though Final Fantasy III was released in 1990, back in the day where storytelling in JRPGs was in its infancy, so it was more excusable there. By the time Final Fantasy IX think... came around, yeah, okay, there's been, there's, there's certain, okay, here's the thing, Sakaguchi. I get that it's a yeah. back to the classics, but there's a reason why that's not everything about the classics was perfect let's just say but go ahead uh, yes. okay, i'll be i'll be honest i don't think time i don't think time should be an excuse for a shitty story or a shitty part of the story okay 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 to be fair dwibs i wouldn't call the story of final fantasy free crap it's literally just the villain the the cloud of darkness it's and simple that's the thing with uh, yeah. uh like like Peter said, it's probably the time and uh, he, the, the, the Final Fantasy franchise also was its in infancy. The, the RPG RPG genre was also in infancy. The story was very straightforward. Evil Wizard yeah. or Evil Dragon, go beat it. The end. It was so, more okay in Final Fantasy 3 because, you know, the stakes weren't as highly emphasized on. When we say it for, was part of the course yeah. for the time, we mean in the sense like, well, the stories weren't as heavily focused on because, well, game two, first and foremost. 2 was uh, was trying to do something else, but it, tried, but it ripped up Star Wars too many times, so I don't really count <laughs> that in the equation. Now, keep in mind, I still enjoy the plot of Final Fantasy 2. It's, yeah. it's, I simply wouldn't call it... Uh, the next step of the franchise it's just was a new to hope. <laughs> four, four and four five was the one that uh, tried yeah, to yeah, do. Yeah. It's, it's one of those. First, uh, it's it's one of those things was where um, uh, at the time uh, st storytelling in video games was kind of starting out of, uh, in some ways. So obviously they were not going to get everything perfect right away. I mean, kind of like. I'll how... admit, it was kind of getting to a point where, with Final Fantasy VI, it was more of a legit surprise that Kefka actually did go on to be the final boss. Like I recall, I some people admit that back because, in the day they were expecting to kind of get stabbed. It's in also back. thanks to Ted Woolsey because in the Japanese version, yeah. Kefka is boring. Oh, uh, yeah. for late, for late, for late, as the as the games progresses, like for example, the Japanese Game Boy Advance script has a revised script, so Kefka is more in the character of uh, the, the Woozy script, so they basically adapted that for Japanese version, which they also kept for the Dissidia games, so Kefka is not currently hated by Japanese people, but when the, first, the game first came out, it was clearly not well received. You know, it's a shame TV doesn't exist in this world. I can imagine, like, the... Um... Oh, well, we have, have, social we, we have social media. Around. We have social media, so there's that. What are you saying, Dubs? <laughs> I can imagine, like, I can imagine, like, them announcing, like, the news programs or sitcom. I, mean, I can imagine the sitcom now, and now on DVD TV, it's time for our wacky sitcom, Evan Almighty. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 it's one of the, one of the things. Uh, the, one of the things that I do, well, that's kind of one of the thing, things that I appreciate about uh, the White Witch in the first game because I always interpreted the White Witch uh, in the first game as kind of a sub, kind of a, a, a subversion or slash different take on the whole JRPG villain that comes out of nowhere in the sense that when the JR, when the White Witch appears out of nowhere, the characters are not aware of, of her, but the player is because the player has been aware of her since the very beginning. So, I, so I always took it that as them kind of taking that particular trope and updating it in a way that makes it work much better. That's kind of how I always took it. But anyway, that's that. All right. So, turn in next time, everybody, where we continue doing some more kingdom building and recruiting more citizens for our cause. So, see you then. See you later.
Sí, sí 